do it in a, you know, don't like to use the video or they're having uh, problems or they're in the car or something. Um, ideally, I would, uh, I would like you to switch your cameras on so we can see, see you. I think it's, it's one of the things I want to talk about. I know some people don't like using their cameras, as I say, or they've got bad signal or, um, but I think it's a lot better if we can see see real faces but obviously if you have problems with uh with with the connection jen just uh jen just switch off the video of course i fully understand that okay so um i'm going to uh first of all show you a couple of slides for one second um so i call this normalizing the online experience as much as possible so i chose a very normal a subnormal uh first slide there of a of a uh, 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 an English teacher who obviously earns more money than I do driving to school in a very expensive car. So, um, but the word is normalization. So um, I, I, I've taken that to uh, to mean making something day to day. Yeah. So uh, let me just go to the next slide. Um, quite a lot of you know me. Um, if you don't know me, there's a little bit of background to me there. Um, I'll share, at the end, I'll share my email address and website if you want to contact me about anything. Um, but quite a, a, quite a lot of you know me. I was in Moldova a couple of years ago and I've done a couple of sessions with, uh, with Meta in the last few months and doing another one in the summer. Um, I will also make, uh, I'll send Larissa copies of these slides as a PDF at the end and she can put them on the website or provide a link or something uh, if anyone's interested in downloading them. Um, I'm also a photographer, so I've chosen the photographs to to kind of talk, show something about things that are not normal, thinking that if I show you things that may not be normal, then we'll understand a little bit more about what what what, what I mean by by normality. Um, what I'm going to do is to ask Larissa to put you into breakout rooms. So I'll stop sharing for a moment. Larissa, could you maybe four. There will be breakout room group type one. And I'll tell you if you are a one or a two. If you're a group one, I want you to talk for about four minutes or so about what you miss as a teacher when teaching online compared to real, real life teaching. So what you miss as a teacher. If you're a group two person, I want you to see things from the student's point of view. And there is my psychedelic cat. What you think students miss in the online teaching space. So if you're group one, what do you think, what do you as a teacher miss? If you're group two, what do you think students miss about being online? So can you make the groups please? Uh, we're gonna have four groups, yeah? So groups one and two are type one. Are teachers. Groups three and four are students. Okay. So there'll be random <laughs> groups. Larissa will do her magic now. So yes. if you're in group one or two, you're teachers, seeing things from the perspective of teachers. If you're group three or four, you're seeing things from the perspective of students. What you think students miss about the online experience. Okay, Larissa, press the buzz back, I think, from the strange world of the, of, of the uh, of the breakout rooms a kind of parallel universe of breakout rooms isn't it um if you uh i mean we, we, we had two groups speaking about teachers two groups speaking about students would somebody like to share what you spoke about um you can switch off your microphone and speak i'd love to hear what what you spoke about anybody any volunteers from any group silence is not acceptable by the way May I start? Of course, please? of course, Larissa, yeah. Uh, so we were to discuss about uh, from a um, student's perspective. Okay. And of course, uh, um, both teachers and students um, uh, miss, uh, so, I mean, socializing. Because as uh, teachers, we talk a lot and students also do talk a lot. So uh, one thing that uh, students and teachers miss is... Uh, the um, lack of socializing with um, mates, with colleagues, yeah, having a coffee, okay. I agree. chatting during breakfast, and of course the um, uh, their friends uh, playing, uh, interacting, engaging in different games, um, conversations, and uh, other stuff like they used to do at school, and face they face, yeah. uh, were not able to do online. 
Of course, I agree. It's that, the, 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 the social aspect is really, really important, I think. OK, thanks, Larissa. Anybody else from a student point of view or, or a teacher's perspective? Anybody? Just just switch on your microphone, switch on your microphone and speak, please. You don't have to be shy. I wanted to add that. Yeah, Olga, yeah. Uh, I have some groups of students which I haven't seen yet since the beginning of the year. So those are just virtual people. I haven't seen them physically. That's uh, very strange, isn't it? Yeah, in 20 years of teaching experience, that's weird. <laughs> And you've no idea, so you've just seen them on, on, on a screen, on a monitor, yeah? Yeah, and usually they are afraid of uh, switching on cameras, not necessarily afraid, but they just uh, refuse to turn on the camera. Yeah, so you don't even know what some of them look like. Yeah, They're and just you can voices. See two letters on, on, uh, on the screen, and that's it. This is really interesting. It's, it's happened, I mean, I, I have a colleague also who started a new job inside uh, the quarantine period and she's never been to her office and she's never met her colleagues only on, on Zoom, which is really strange. But I think from a teaching point of view, if you haven't met a student face to face or even sometimes not even seen their face, can you judge their character? I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, we all know that the student's character, the student's personality, the way they learn, the way they interact is so important to the learning process. And if you're in the room with them after 20 minutes, half an hour, we can all get a feeling, get us, okay, he's going to, oh, he's going to be difficult. She's, okay, fine. She's, oh, he's really good. You, you get this feeling, don't you, just by being in the room. But just a tiny little face. I don't know. I don't think you can get that, that, that psychological understanding of them. So it's going to be interesting, Olga, when you meet them face to face. Maybe, maybe you're, you can compare what you think they're going to be like with what they actually are and see how accurate it is when, when, when you actually confront them in class. Anybody else like to, to mention anything? Uh, I just wanted one yeah, of course. thing to mention uh, that uh, students are really smart and they are good at cheating. So when cheating? Online, yeah. They are cheating at their tests. They are cheating when they are making presentations. When you ask a question, a question they immediately find the answer online and they pretend being so smart. So that's a disadvantage. Yeah, and it's difficult to control, isn't it? It's very difficult mm -hmm. to control. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is cheating. I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a thin line between cheating and research, isn't there? I mean, the <laughs> argument Probably. could be, she's not cheating she's using the internet for its best purpose which is to find information but if she's using it for a test then it's cheating um i remember when i was a student uh, my supervisor said to me um reading reading one book is plagiarism reading two books is research and that that that's kind of an, it kind of shows that 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 it is a fine line i mean i really want students to use the internet to find answers because that's what it's for isn't it you can get so many things online uh, but i absolutely agree with what olga says you can also cheat and, and the problem is we don't know what they're doing do we we can't see what they're doing so they may not be as smart as you think they are olga when you meet them it'd be interesting to find out anybody else want to comment on anything from the teacher's point of view or the student point of view if i may say uh, uh, yeah, Larissa, again, yeah. again the sense of belonging because when the teachers go to school and they meet their colleagues and students also wear their uniforms and they come to school, they have this sense of belonging. Yeah, they feel they are part of that community. But if they are at home, they lose this sense. And that's bad from my point of view. I because agree. All, I mean, school is us, a community, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All of us need to have this sense of belonging. Yeah, we tend yet yeah, to belong to a group, to a community, to um, something. Yeah, and we lose this sense, and that's that's important for, from my point of view. I agree, Lewis. The school is a is a club, isn't it? Really, you're members of that club, and you, we show our membership by by uniforms, of course, but also by the way we behave, by rules and things, and we we, we lose that, uh, or it's it's diluted anyway. Whether we've lost it is is debatable. OK, let me, I've got a few bits and pieces I'd okay, like to show so you. Yeah, somebody, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Group number four. Okay. We spoke about access to education. Not mm. all of the students had access 
especially those from remote areas rural areas no yeah. internet no gadgets no mobiles no computers unfortunately also some of them missed their parent support if to speak about primary classes parents mm. work they were left alone and couldn't access that is also uh, yeah, you're right. Absolutely, you're right. And, and it, 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 I mean, this. We, it, some people use the term the digital divide. Yes, people who have divide. access to the internet and people who don't. And uh, in the UK, it's a problem also. In the, in rural areas here, if there is internet, it will resort. Usually, some internet is very, it's a very slow. In yeah? Moldova is a disaster. Yeah, but I mean, it, it is in a lot of countries. I think, particularly rural areas, if they have connection, it's very slow. So they can't use Zoom, and many people don't have access to, to, to tablets or phones. Or, or so, absolutely, it's a, it's a problem. Um, okay, well, let's have a look at one or two ideas. Larissa, it says we've got nine minutes left, so you'll have to re deal with that when it happens. Yeah, okay, we, we can change it. Okay, so I've got a few ideas, um, and, and I think it's kind of supported by some of the things you said. I think that the four areas that teachers worry most about is what I call collegiality. That sense of community of being with of being together, which which kind of is what two or three of you mentioned. I think it's very important. Don't forget, you will get copies of these slides. Uh, Larissa will make them available to you online on the website if you're interested. Um, you don't need to copy if you don't want to. Collegiality. I think most teachers, and also me working as a teacher educator, I find the online experience very very intense. Um, it's funny, we talk about going back to face-to-face -to -face teaching in classrooms, but I think Zoom is face-to-face because -face, you are literally face-to-face, -face, aren't we? Um, in, in many ways, school is not face-to-face. -face. Now we've experienced Zoom. Zoom is the face-to-face -face thing. I find it very intense. I find it very tiring. Um, you don't have that opportunity just to walk around the room and go, ah, sit, which we all need to do sometimes. You don't, you're, you're here, you're in front of everybody. Um, and I think from a pedagogic point of view, it's very teacher centered. If you're not careful, it's just you. It's you talking, 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 talking. It's very teacher centered. And I think um, this sense of belonging that we spoke about, it's very impersonal. And also Olga mentioned she, she's met these students online, but she doesn't know who they are. Um, it's very impersonal. And I think those are the things that teachers tend to worry about most of all. Um, here's a few thoughts about what students miss or what students don't like. Um, that was the first one we had chatting with friends. You know, students, part of being at school for me, is not the classes, it's the corridor, the playground, the wherever, you know, walking around the school, it's that. Um, students say, it's just too much. It's, it's just coming at me. Or it, it's the intensity. It's the same argument, it's intensity. It's just listening to the teacher. That's all we do is listen to the teacher, talking, talking, talking. And some teachers use Zoom or the other platforms in that way. Um, they're shy. People feel shy. And the trouble is, in some ways, being on a platform like this is more public than speaking at school. If you're a shy student, you can speak at school in a small group at the back of the room and you kind of disappear. There's no disappearing here. You're either speaking or you're hiding. There's, there's, there's two positions. Um, we feel like robots. We're just little faces or names on a screen. Um, sometimes tech things go wrong and I feel lost. And we're going to talk about that problem. That sometimes the technology goes wrong and they just disappear. Uh, what do I do? Help, I've gone. The teacher's gone. My colleagues have gone. I'm lost. What do I do? Um, it's very public. Sometimes I want to talk to the teacher privately. And I think students of all kinds like to feel the teacher will have some time to speak to them one to one. And say, don't worry, it's fine. I know it's difficult, it'll be okay, it'll be okay, don't worry. It's difficult on Zoom, isn't it? Because everybody else is listening. So you lose that private channel of communication. I think students also sometimes look, and I know this from my own son's experience, they look at the things that the worksheets or documents that teachers produce and think, mm, I could make that much better, especially teenagers. 
who know how to use design techno and technology software. Teachers try things, and, oh, it's not very exciting. I could make that a lot better. I could make some animations on there. I could do a lot better than that. Um, so that's a repeat, talking to the teacher privately. That's, that's the same point. Um, teachers don't talk to us about the lessons anymore or ask for feedback. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think most of us, when we're teaching in a class, just occasionally we'll say to students, did you enjoy that? Did you like that? That was fun, wasn't it? Oh, that was quite hard, wasn't it? We have these conversations about the lesson, about the activities. And the students like to feeling, yeah, that was good. We enjoyed that. Can we do that next week? Can we do a different one next week? Because they like it. Somehow that gets lost online and students feel they don't get that. The project work that students enjoy so much, posters, these kinds of things, group activities, gone. Or maybe they've gone. We need to think about how, how we deal with that. Students, we know students like to engage in project work, making things, physically making, making a poster, making a, a banner, making something. Well, it's gone, hasn't it? Because we're just sitting behind a screen. Um, the way teachers use videos. There are teachers in the world who'll play a five or six minute video. That's really intense. It's really heavy. Especially on a small screen, it's really exhausting. So I think the way that we use videos. Um, breakout rooms. We like the breakout rooms, but where's the teacher? Now remember, as a teacher, you can join breakout rooms one by one. And not only can you join, but you should. Because when you're monitoring groups in real classes, real in inverted commas, you monitor how, how you uh, reflect that in, in breakout rooms with Zoom. So where's the teacher gone? And I've forgotten what the teacher looks like. All we see is slides. There are teachers that hide as well. I don't think you can teach without showing your face. And I don't think you can teach all the time by just being a tiny, like I am now, a tiny little figure in the corner. I think sometimes you need to stop sharing and be you and then go back to slides or go back to worksheets. We, we, otherwise, why are you there? Maybe it's just better to send a video, you know, and do it asynchronously. Larissa, do you want to change platforms now? Because it's a convenient point for me to change other things we, we, we were somebody thought, talked about a sense of belonging a sense of being well i think that's connected with membership i think that's connected with collegiality with feeling part of a community so let's think about one or two of these things and i think this in many ways is perhaps the most the most important thing the social aspect um i think teachers worry a lot about what they're doing when they're teaching in the, the, the lessons, let's call them. And we forget sometimes about, and it was the first thing that I think was Larissa who mentioned it, the, the fact that that's what students miss. They miss seeing their friends, chatting with their friends in the corridor, these kinds of things. Um, well, I've been to a couple of conferences, uh, more than a couple, but quite a few conferences, but one really stood out with me because what they did in the breaks and the intervals between the sessions, is that they used breakout rooms and they used them in two ways in some cases they just put people randomly into breakout rooms and just said talk and i was that happened to me i was pushed into a breakout room with strangers and the first minute and being british we have problems speaking to strangers anyway but forgetting that the first minute or two it was a bit kind of <clears throat> what's your name oh okay oh, i can see your name oh i met you oh, are we friends off and blah, 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 blah. and then the conversation starts and, and it, I really felt it was a social event. As an alternative on the second day, this conference used the same technique, except they gave us tasks. Talk about this, talk about that, discuss this, discuss that. We started doing the task and then we abandoned it, but it was a good way to get us started. And I think when we've got gaps in lessons or spaces between lessons, the idea of pushing students, as I put their pre-lesson and post-lesson, and in breaks by pushing students into breakout rooms to some extent reproduces the face-to-face -face experience. You can say, go into the room and talk about X or just put them in the room. 
and it's surprising people start talking, even students, even teenagers. The first minute or two, it's a bit nervous and they check the teacher's not there. And you could say, I'm not coming in the breakout rooms. Do what you want. It's not recorded. Just go. So you're not, they know you're not going to be spying on them and listening to them. I mean, you might be tempted to, but don't. Um, but I think that's one way, it's the only way I can think of that produces this sociability. So, and I, I've used it quite a lot now. When I run a, a two hour or three hour workshop with a break in the middle, I push everyone in the break. Some people leave to have a coffee and come back again. Or they, I say, you've got five minutes to make a cup of coffee, come back, go into the breakout room and talk. What about just talk? And they do. And I think it's, it's, it's also puts air in the lungs as well. So it's kind of quite fun to do from that point of view. Um, intensity, the speed and the interaction. You know, it's, it's very much, there's a big risk that it's just like watching television, isn't it? It's just you, bang, 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 bang. So mixed media, something of you. So occasionally do this. Even in the middle of a slide, just, just do this for two minutes, talk, and then just, you know, go back again. Just that break makes a difference. Um, mixed media, you know, if you have some video, a video clip you want to show, use it as long as it's fairly short. Keep changing the pace. You change pace in real classes. You can do it here. And I have no problem with students doing some individual work in a Zoom session. Say, okay. Could you write this paragraph alone now? You've got four minutes. It doesn't matter if you're if it's live online. It doesn't matter. It's not a waste of time. In fact, it's an investment because you're changing the pace, you're changing the speed, you're changing the interaction patterns. And I do it with teachers in teacher development workshops. I say, do this alone, please. And they do it for five minutes, and then we come back and we share ideas. So constant changing pace, changing interaction patterns, including individual work, I think is very important. Um, what I call decentering the teacher, removing the teacher from the center of attention. Yeah, in our real classes, we talk a lot about learner-centered teaching, about reducing the role of the teacher. I think we need to take these patterns and apply them to this online environment as well. Um, pair work, you know you can use private chat for that in Zoom. One student talks to another student privately. That's as close as you can get to pair work. It's written chat, but it's something you can do. Saying, okay, you two work together, you two work together, you two work together, you two work together, and they use private chat. They learn how to do it in 30 seconds because they're young. And some way of, of, of replicating, of replicating the one-to-one the, the -one feeling of pair work. Um, how many of you use the whiteboard or annotation in Zoom? Do some of you use it? I mean, you know. I'm sorry, I use Jamboard because we okay. used Google Meet. Okay, it then it was works better, but it, the, the functionality generally. is the same, yeah. But you know, I mean, for example, yeah, you can do that really easily on Zoom. And that's, a lot of teachers never use it. Just use the annotate button and remember to clear it, otherwise it stays there forever on every screen. There are lots and lots of features in Zoom, for example, and you mentioned, Larissa mentioned they use, they use Google, so you use Jamboard. I think if you use Teams, it also works. Um, I hate Teams, absolutely, but it, it is. They all have this functionality. So again, it's, it's decentering the teacher. It's putting the focus on other things. And you can introduce other platforms. Um, I've been playing with Canva. Some of you may have seen the one called Canva, a fantastic way to produce worksheets, posters, class magazines. Students can work on it online collaboratively. You can work on it in class together online. And it's a change of pace. It does things that you can't do on Zoom that you can't do on Google Meet. I do recommend having a play with Canva. And if you look at it, oh, I can't do this. Remember, if you're teaching teenagers, you have 25 reasonably expert IT people. They'll give them two minutes, make it a project. Go home tonight, play with Canva, learn it. Come back to me and tell me how it works. There's a lesson. Um, and they will engage. Um, you know, using breakout rooms a lot. I use them a lot. Um, I've only used them once today, but I, I will use them a lot. I think it changes the pace very much. And I think making students host, giving them control. When in real classes, you might bring two students to the front of the room very often. So, okay, tell everybody what you did. 
you can do exactly the same make them co-host and uh, some oh i can't do that yes you can just try now speak oh is that it that's it so just giving as i say it's decentering the teacher repositioning the teacher a little bit um surgeries uh we use surgeries mainly to talk about going to the doctor surgeries are when you give students a time time specific and time limited when you are available to talk to them one on one this is important for two reasons if you're teaching extensively and i know you're back at school now but who knows where we're going to be in september i nobody knows um but i think we've all learned from this one thing i've learned is you don't have much one on one time with students online. It's largely collective. The, the closest you get is breakout rooms, and maybe four students, five students. Um, that's an important part of teaching, in my opinion, that one on one time, even if it's just one minute to say, don't worry, it's fine. The second reason it's important is student welfare and well being. We all know that students' mental health has suffered a lot. And one reason, I think, is that lack of connectivity with the teacher. So a surgery is when you say, I will be online on Friday from 4 o'clock to 4.30. If you want to come, come and join me. You'll get three minutes. You have to be quite strict. Otherwise, you get one student, unless you think there's a serious problem. You need to be quite strict. I will be available. Um, first week, maybe one student will come. Second week, two students. Next week, you'll get lots of students coming. But the point is, you're available. You're say, saying, I'm here for you. Surgery, as I say, sounds like a doctor, but that's basically what it is. You're there to speak to somebody and they might want to speak about something personal. Like, oh, I'm finding this. I find, you might say, how are you finding lockdown? How are you, oh, quite the hour. Uh, everything's okay at home. Yeah, well, and you learn a lot in that way as well. You can't do it in a public domain. You can't expect people to speak. Um, interactivity. Interactivity feels quite flat online, doesn't it? because it's just you, me, you, me, you, me. I've been having some fun playing with, with teachers, actually, asking them to speak to each other, speak, using with, but with the microphone off. And the others just watching facial gestures and hand gestures have to try to understand what they're saying. It's really fun. Because I thought, is that what you were talking? I thought you were talking about this. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's fun and it makes the interactivity more human in a way. Because we all know that we speak with this as much as we speak with with the, with the voice, and it's so easy to do on Zoom. You just mute. It's not complicated. Uh, you, I think you can do it in breakout rooms as well, but you can certainly do it in the in the in the public area. And they say. I thought you were talking, I had no idea you were talking about that. How, how you were smiling. Oh, that's why you were smiling, weren't you? And they have these conversations afterwards. Um, it, it, it's, it's fun, but it also creates a kind of emotional, um, psychological relationship that I think we tend, we're losing, which is obviously disappointing. Uh, the big moose, by the way, is in a church in Helsinki. If you ever go to Finland, go to Helsinki. It's in the Church of the Rock, which is a famous cathedral carved in the carved in rock in Helsinki, it's quite amazing. Um, another thing, students say, uh, we've gone offline, help, I don't know what to do, or they want to speak to you personally. I usually have a back channel. A back channel means not only Zoom, but I have another way of communicating with people. Um, lots of different ways. Some people use WhatsApp. Um, the problem with WhatsApp, of course, is you do get people's phone numbers and not everybody is comfortable with that. Um, the alternative to WhatsApp is to use Telegram because Telegram doesn't take phone numbers and you can just have the person's name. But it's useful because if suddenly the, the internet goes or something happens, you can, send a, you can instantly send a message saying, go to this link now, everything's okay, or give me five minutes. Or a student can say, uh, do you mind if I go for five minutes? It's fine, don't worry. So the back channel is important. If you want something a bit more high tech, there's this platform called Slack, which is really fun. It's free and easy to use. It's a virtual online community that you can use, but closed just for your class or your school or your year or your teaching association, whatever you want to do. Slack is really fun. It's really nice to use. Um, it's, it, it wasn't particularly well known before lockdown. Since the lockdown started, it's become phenomenally successful as a way to keep in touch with people. 
But I always have a back channel, another way to contact me. Because, yeah, the internet crashes, people feel lost. I don't know what to do. Or if their internet collapses. But if they have on their phone, they have Telegram, they say, sorry, my internet's gone. Okay, fine, don't worry. Come back when you can. Um, so I always have a parallel channel when I can. A back channel, if you wish. Um, putting students in control. I mean, another very powerful weapon that we have is empowering students and it decenters us it empowers them it motivates them so one obvious way is making them host on occasion giving them control saying okay you two are co-hosts now for the next five minutes ten minutes you two are co-hosts tell us about your experience with this tell us about what you spoke about in your group um so giving them control if they're co-hosts and you're still host you can still mute them and eliminate them if it, anything goes wrong. Um, it's very empowering for students. And as I say at the beginning, some of them, I can't do that. I can't, come on, try. Oh, that's okay, this. So making them co-host for five minutes and then somebody else, two more co-hosts for another five minutes or something. It's very, it, it takes you away from the center, but it also motivates and empowers the students, I think, which is so important. Um, I also like the idea of having for every class, a chat room or a forum where they can discuss things before they ask you. Uh, the obvious platform is Facebook, a closed Facebook group. But I mean, there are lots of other platforms you can use as well. So, for example, you might say, OK, tonight, this is this is the homework I'd like you to do. Maybe quite difficult. Before you get asked me tomorrow, have a little chat. Go to the forum and see what the others think. Have a chat with the others. Then do your homework and then we'll talk about it tomorrow. It increases learner autonomy. It helps to develop that sense of community. And it develops very important, what I think very important skills, such as giving uh, support to others, helping others, accepting help, giving feedback, all these other important skills. So the obvious thing is a chat is, is a Facebook page, but there are lots of other, other platforms that you can use to say, you know, this is where you can talk to each other about things. And if, if it's a closed page or group on Facebook, nobody else can see it. I and mean, you don't even have to monitor it because nobody else can see it. You might want to just keep an eye on it in case there's anything abusive happens. But the idea is that they speak, which is what they would do in class. If you watch students in class, they're doing a grammar activity. Do you think it's this one or is it that? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is it that one? Okay. Then they speak to you. They speak to each other first and then they speak online that's more difficult to do you can do breakout rooms but creating as i say creating that that idea that they discuss the problem before they come to you and the other thing i mentioned before is uh students design skills um you know, teachers not all teachers are natural um natural designers are we um we try to make worksheets um i mean i've produce some dreadful things over the years nothing straight and the logo keeps moving around and you give it to a student they put the logo there oh you've done it how did you do that it took me it took me two hours to not do that you took it yeah well you just drag it and drop it okay mm, fine well let's take advantage of that you know student involvement say here's some worksheets over the weekend can some of you make them look nicer can you move the pictures can you change the font and they'll love that I mean, as they say, you can suggest platforms like Canva that I mentioned before, which is very good, but it can just be on, you know, it can be Word, it could be a PowerPoint document. It involves them, it empowers them. I did that, I helped her with that. And it also strangely shows a little bit of teacher vulnerability. And I don't think that's always a bad thing. Um, I believe that, well, I'm fairly convinced, at least, that teenage students don't necessarily think that teachers are human beings. Um, you know, when you're about 15, teachers seem to be very strange animals. I remember when I was about 13, 14, I saw my French teacher walking down the road, the road holding hands with his girlfriend. I mean, he's horrified when he saw me, but I was even more, he's got a girlfriend? Ridiculous. What's going on here? Is he human? No, of course he's not human. Um, I really couldn't, and he was more embarrassed than I was probably. It's ridiculous, really. They don't know that we're human, that we have kids and girlfriends and boyfriends and all these things. And dogs, I think, as well. Um, but 
showing a little bit of the human side of a teacher. Say, look, yeah, I'm quite old. I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? We'll do it. Don't worry. Don't worry, Miss. We'll do it over the weekend. The three of them will come back with a beautiful worksheet or post or whatever. You're empowering them, but you're also showing a little bit of human vulnerability, which I think is important. Like sometimes saying to students, yeah, oh, present perfect tense. I remember the first time I did that. My God, it's difficult. It's very strange, isn't it? Don't worry. I, I struggled at first. It'll be OK. Don't worry about it. That means so much to a child to hear that from you. Well, she had trouble with it, but she's an English teacher. Well, I'll be OK then, won't I? It's not just me. And the same applies to technology. So you said design skills. And funnily, it's often I, I found that the kind of, I'm being a bit stereotypical, the kind of quiet, geeky student who doesn't speak very much and is very shy may be able to produce the very best worksheet. You know, whoa, OK, you, you, you don't like speaking English, but you can use your computer very, very well, can't you? So you're, you're also responding to that, too, I think. Um, so think a little bit about that. Um, asking students things, asking them how they're feeling about the online experience. I, I don't know, I think a lot of teachers thought when we started this, this Zoom process, this online teaching game, we thought the students would take to it very naturally, as we say, like ducks to water. They haven't at all. Um, I don't think they've struggled with it. We've struggled with it. I've struggled with it. I'm sure you have. I mean, the first seems like 20 years ago, but it was only last year when we first started using Zoom. I had some horrible experiences. I didn't know how to unmute myself. People shouting at me and pointing at things and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to share screens. I used to, oh, it was dreadful. Uh, but equally, students don't know either, didn't know either. They've had bad experiences. We all have. So I think asking them, as I say, in class, we'll often say, did you enjoy that? That was good, wasn't it? Should, should we do that next week? Oh, you don't want to do that again. Okay, fine. I'll think of a different one for next week. Now, that kind of interaction involves them. You can do it online. You can set, very easy to set up online surveys in Zoom, and you can do it in the other platforms too. What did you think of the first activity? Did you like it? Was it okay? Did you hate it? Little questionnaire, little online survey. It takes two minutes to do. Students click, click, click. Yes, love, hate, like, whatever. It's fun. Uh, you can use polls or also on Zoom. Or in the survey, in, 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 in the surgery, if you meet students individually, you can say, so, how are you getting on with online? Do you like it? What don't you like about it? Do you want to, is there something else we could try? Asking students is very, very important, I think, how they feel about the online experience and getting their input. As I say, our assumption, I think, was that they were okay about it and they were enjoying it. I don't think they have been completely. I mean, I had a chat when I was right. I wrote this talk last week and I, I chatted with my, my we 17 now, my 17 year old son, who's had a lot of online in the last 18 months. He said, We hate it. We really hate it. I said, Are the teachers bad at it? He said, They're not as bad as they were. He said, They they've learnt, um, but we, we don't like it. It doesn't engage us. So, you know, asking them these kinds of questions, I think, is quite, quite a useful thing to do. Um, Develop a structure and approach and use it. I think we've had enough time working online now to know how we are comfortable, what works for us. And I do believe that students do like some familiarity in the way we organize our teaching. We start with something like this and we go here. Usually we have a discussion here. Uh, then we go to breakout rooms generally. And then we come back and maybe we watch a short video, whatever. I think students like to see a structure and the, to become familiar with it. Because if you think about it, um, we've gone from course books, which are very, very structured. Yes, course books, basically, practically any English language course book in the world you look at, every unit is exactly the same. They're organized in exactly the same way, apart from the content. Yeah, online, it's become a bit, a bit, bit messy. We do, we go off in different directions. I think some structure, particularly, particularly teenagers, but also young learners need some structure to know we usually start with a three minute conversation about something, maybe about the weather, about something that's outside, about sport, just to relax us. Then we do this, then we do this, then we do this, because that's what they're used to. They've gone from the rigidity of a course book to the sometimes mess 
of um, of online. I think that's that's a bit unfair on them. So familiarity does not always breed contempt. In other words, you know, sometimes a familiar structure is important to students. I think it's important to us as well. So think about having a uniformity of approach to online work. I think uh, projects. I mean, students like doing projects. Um, as I say, whether it's designing a poster. Uh, some of you who know me know that I'm involved in a lot of uh, in environmental uh, projects and getting students outside, picking up plastic bags or cleaning up the beach, these kinds of any kind of project. Um, the great thing about projects is, of course, they can be do asynchronously. They're, they're not done live. So you can say, OK, you, you've got two hours to this week to do this project. You can do it alone. Or if you're allowed to meet your friends, you can do it with your friend, however it's organized. So they're, they're generally asynchronous. They're not, they're not live. The, the reporting is live. They're collaborative and they have an end product, which could be a poster, uh, it, some, something physical usually, which can be physical or can be digital. Yeah, a poster can be digital. They, 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 they can design it on paper and then they can just take a picture of it and they can share it with you online. Um, don't forget projects. Students like projects. Students make projects push students to use the language. They give them an end product they can be proud of. It could be, you know, make, as I say, make a poster, make a, make a banner. When you've done it, do it on paper if you want to. Take a photograph of it and then share it with us. As, as, as you're doing on with, with, with your environmental competitions in, inside Meta, it's the same idea. It's a, a, an end product that with one camera can, or phone can be made into a digital product that can be shared. So don't forget projects um, at all. Students enjoy doing them. Uh, videos. Yeah, I think the problem is that a lot of teachers are, for whatever reason, using rather long video clips. Um, remember, a video clip, a long video clip is like on, on, a, on, on, a, on a, maybe on a tablet or on a mobile phone, is, is, or even on a big screen, is exhausting. It's very, very intensive. I'm saying to teachers, two or three minutes, that's enough. Anything more than that, students' attention will go. So short video clips or partial video clips, just giving just giving the, 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 the coordinates, two minutes, 13 seconds to two minutes, 59 seconds. That's the part I want you to look at. Students know how to do that. They're perfectly able to, 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 to do that. Even, even young students can, 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 can drag the slider along to, to two minutes or three minutes or something. I know teachers are showing 10, 15 minute video clips. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm not sure that's the way to do it. It really isn't. I think it's short, sharp, discuss before, short video, discuss afterwards, write something. Okay, then maybe another video, another two minutes or something. Keep it short. Otherwise, I think attention spans are going to go. It's a very intensive game, this, isn't it? This online, online process. Uh, breakout rooms. Remember, you can join the breakout room. And remember, more importantly, you should join the breakout room. I just go around in sequence, one, two, three, four, back to the beginning again, one, two, three, four, the same way as you monitor. Okay, I might know number two is quite a strong group. They need less of me, perhaps number four struggling. I may need a bit longer with number four. Go there to intervene if necessary. When I set up a breakout room task, I go to every breakout room immediately for 30 seconds to check they know what they're doing. We do that in real classes. We quickly go around, and, okay, yes, there are, uh, no, no, it's in pairs, not in groups. You took, you took, good, just to check. Otherwise, it, they're hidden away and it collapses. So ready to intervene to make sure they're, they're on message, to provide support, to guide, to encourage, all these things. And you can only do that by visiting. And also to cajole, that's your new word for the day, to cajole. Does anybody know what to cajole means? It means to push, to persuade strongly. Oh, he's been cajoling me for weeks to do this. I mean, he's been pushing me. So sometimes you've got to go to say, come on, guys, this is the task. I know you want to talk about football, but this is what you're doing now. 
and then you go away again. So breakout rooms is not a chance to have a cup of coffee and sit back. You've got to get in there, I think, and, and go from one to the other. I'm sure you do, but I know not all teachers do. I'm always busy going in and out of breakout rooms. They know you're there. You're not spying on them. And of course, you can you go usually when you arrive, you're muted, but you can just unmute and speak as you need to. Um, otherwise, they drift. It's a strange world, the breakout room. As I say, it's a kind of parallel universe. And um, I think we need to, 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 to visit a lot. The same as we monitor real groups, you know, face to face, basically. Um, show your face. Don't hide behind the slides. Um, as I say, go from, you know, this, this is what I'm doing now. Do that just for two or three minutes. It breaks the pace up a little bit and then go back again. It just makes a difference, that change in pace. Yeah, you know, they want to know what you look like. And um, I don't think you can run a lesson without the ca your camera switched on. Uh, it's so important, the face, unless you have disastrous connectivity, which you might have. I think it's something, yeah, it needs to be switched on. I encourage students to switch on their cameras as well. I know we can't necessarily require it, but I do encourage, and the same with teachers, I encourage them to switch them on. Um, it makes it a less painful experience for everybody, I think. And I don't care what, what people have got behind them. You know, I'm not interested. But did you know, by the way, Zoom has recently introduced a new virtual background, which allows you to put everyone into classes, like a classroom, and you can see the whole class sitting next to each other. Or you can make them into a picture gallery and everyone is a different picture in the gallery. It's just introduced about two weeks ago. I tried it properly yet but it looks quite fun um but don't yeah don't hide away they want to see you believe it or not they do want to see you um they might even think you're human if they see you you never know so i'm at the end i've gone quite quickly any questions problems alarms or despondencies from you about teaching online this is your chance to ask me any questions we have some time before we get disconnected i think so questions Anybody, questions, problems, alarms, or despondences? Now is the time. I just, uh, I was checking the, the, the thing with the background that you were saying. <laughs> Apparently not everybody gets that. So this is something for people who use Zoom like on a regular basis every day. Do, are you, you have to have a paid account, I think. Have you, yeah, have, you, we, we you have to have a pro yeah. account, I think. Yeah. yeah, I haven't used it yet, but it looks mm -hmm. quite fun. Okay, any questions I'll from anybody? Say that. again. I'll yeah, that, you can give it a try. Uh, I think it might be quite interesting. Um, so I'll stop sharing. So we've got me. So ask me questions. Everyone's looking. Now it's the time. Somebody's <laughs> driving, so she can't ask questions. Okay, let's check uh, chat if nobody knows. Yeah, the chat, of course, as well. Immersive view. Okay. Immersive view, that's the one. Yes, yeah. immersive view. Google Meet, yeah. Canva, yeah, Canva's mm -hmm. fun. Miro, you know, I don't know. Um, and the other one I mentioned was Slack, but Canva is very nice for designing worksheets, posters, these kinds of things. And it's, it's very easy to use, very simple to use. Any questions? They're very okay. quiet, aren't they, Larissa? I thought my. So is everybody here Moldovan or not? <laughs> Have we got any non-Moldovans? I'm from I Israel. <laughs> oh, we got, okay, so we're Anna from Israel. Tel Aviv, or, are you in Tel Aviv or which city? No, I'm from Ashdod. It's it's a southern city. The, the bottom it's, end, yeah? It's close to Rishon Lition, if okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's about 42 kilometers from Tel Aviv. Okay, south. Going down, yeah. And it's hot there, is it? You've got good weather now, yeah? It's very hot. Yeah, yeah it's good. about 32 degrees now. Yeah, I could, that's better than London, which was <laughs> six degrees yesterday. So I'll, I'll have your weather, I think, anytime. Anybody else is any more non Moldovans? I'm interested to know. I can't see anyone else. We had somebody, I think, at the beginning, somebody named Mohammed or something. Oh, yeah, there was sure yeah. okay. us. All Moldovans. Okay, so, so if nothing else occurs and no other questions occur <laughs> i'll just have to say okay. thank you thank you thank you you're very welcome as always welcome oh and there's so a certificate is, look at that yes uh, our 
Thank usual you very much. Thing of, yes, usual thing of, of uh, usual say, like way of say, saying thank you. Um, thank you. I think that the teachers and we will come back with some other details, maybe, and some other questions afterwards. Okay. Well, I'll just put. Um, can I still share? One second. Let me just share uh -huh. my. Uh, as I say, I'll send the uh, send the slides to uh, um, to Larissa later on. But if you want to contact me, my email address is there. My website is there. And uh, the, the other web address is ELT Footprint, which some of you may know, which is my environmental project as well. Um, so you can have a look at that too. But I will send copies of these to Larissa later on today's PDFs, and then you can put them on the website or whatever, on the, all the Facebook pages. Yeah, usually, yes. The usual, the usual to... thing that you do. Yeah. So you'll find my yes. email address there. So feel free to contact me if you wish to about anything. Okay. Any questions before I leave you? So who have you got next? Who's speaking next? Add to a 